Hello, it's Webs here again with another Hearthstone deck video, and I gotta hand it off to Dark Alley Pack for being shockingly great in a modern take on Handlock. And to shock our opponents with no questline involved in it at all. Thus allowing you to have a relatively powerful control deck in modern Hearthstone, which is something that is not necessarily that present in current meta standards. For mulligans, you usually want to keep cards like Touch of the Nath Regime or Drain Soul so you can deal with early minions on board. However, if you're in a matchup against Mage in particular, that kind of goes out of the window and you're looking for cards like Dark Alley Pack or even some of your higher cost cards in the deck such as Inatheron or even cards like Arch Witch Willow. Try to say that five times fast. For other cards that are usually great in keeping in your open hand no matter what matchup you're facing, Goldshire Knoll is another one of those cards, along with Dark Alley Pack, as both of these cards allow you to have a huge minion out on like turn 4 or 5, and your opponent usually doesn't have a way to answer that, or they have to burn a ton of resources in order to do it. With that being said, let's get into the games. Alright, time for game 1 against Druid. This opening hand doesn't actually look too terrible. We're going to want to get rid of the Dreadlord though. Drawing to Tadsman, which isn't bad. It'll allow us to copy our Touch of the Nathrezing if I really need to. Just going to pass the turn. As it is better to sometimes just pass the turn in this deck, even though, sure, I could have played the Armor Vendor, but for a card like Entitled Customer that we just drew into, having as many cards as humanly possible in our hand is great. So they're not questline druid, which means they're probably some type of celestial druid or taunt druid. But because they're not playing any cards, it's probably, to be honest, celestial. I should have just tapped and played in Aetherion. One day I'll be able to announce that card without stumbling over my words. So they do look like they're some type of ramp. They could also be clown druid, I guess. Going to play the Knoll. Then if we were smart, we would tap and play the Nithrion. But I guess not. It isn't like Druid has a lot of ways to deal with a bunch of big minions. Though that swarm is kind of a shock. So next turn we're actually going to have to get rid of the swarm some oh wait, we have coin and entitled customer. Never mind. Or I'll just forget completely about it and then uh, kill some of the minions with some touches and then the two null that we have on board. Sometimes I'm always amazed with how bad I can be at misplaying in certain games. Maybe it's because some of these games are recorded at like 4 in the morning, but I would prefer to think I'm better at Hearthstone than I probably actually am. Though I don't claim to be a good Hearthstone player anyways. Or I should say a great Hearthstone player. The Enhanced Dreadlord is nice for later, but we don't need it for now. Backfire will turn on our Aether on. And we burn a Entitled Customer, which sucks. Just going to play a pack meal and the armor vendor. The amount of times I meet this, the Anethrion is kind of amazing. Celestial alignment sucks. Actually, it doesn't suck that much. We do have a bunch of high cost minions in the deck, so thus we're just going to get them out for very cheap. I want to do something with Celestial Druid, I just don't know how to make it unique. There's probably some funny strategies that you could actually do with it. Because it does seem like a deck that would be straight up my alley, I just... I don't know. I haven't been able to come up with anything.
The good news is we have an entitled customer in case they do a big push for something. Maybe that's why I kept the Anether on in my hand. Because I knew something like this would happen. Kind of insane how much Celestial Druid can actually do on one turn. But it isn't considered like a tier 1 deck right now. I guess it's because aggro and uh, questline mage exist. And fatigue warlock would also have been a problem, I guess. Hmm, so we can board clear with our entitled customer, but it's also going to clear our board, which sucks. But we gotta do what we gotta do to survive, no? Drawing into two dark alley packs here is great though. Means we have two nine nines in our hand. It actually synergizes pretty well with Ray's Dead because sometimes you will get the eight or the nine attack minions back. Sure, you're going to have to wait until later, but that also allows you to have a demon in your hand for Willow. I'm shocked that I haven't seen any uh, Survival of the Fittest in this deck. I'm assuming they just don't run it anymore? I don't know. Arbor Up, I guess, is technically a better version of Survival of the Fittest and something like this. Just because you can play it before you get your combo pieces off and then still survive. The germinations really, really suck. And the second celestial alignment could actually lose us the game. Drawing into hysteria, which is great. We can actually turn one of their minions against them. And it actually doesn't do as much as I thought it would. I'm almost out of cards. But we should be able to still survive since they don't have any direct damage and they've already used their two auger ups. Alright, we need a second hysteria. That's not Hysteria. Or an Entitled Customer would have also worked, but we don't have enough mana for that. We can kill the Ysera with a Drained Soul and a Touch of the Nathrezim. Thus giving us another turn to draw into Hysteria. And they're basically out of cards at this point, so we don't have to worry about anything else. Best in the Shell kind of sucks, but if we get a Hysteria, we should be fine. And there's our second Hysteria. That's great. Imagine having 40 armor and 26 HP and still losing the game. There's actually some other matchups I could see their deck actually losing still in this position, sadly. Just would need to get a big enough Ignite. And now we can heal up for a bunch, and we'll win the game. Alright, time for game two against Shaman. Gonna get rid of the Dreadlord. There's no reason to keep it. Getting rid of the Raised Dead also can be helpful here, just because we have literally no targets. Though the Touch and the Drain Soul are going to be great. Drawing into a Null, which is probably the best top deck we could get here. The Willow is not that good, though. I'm gonna coin out the Backfire. 
drawing into a pack meal, which gives us three cards instead of two. Or four cards, I should say. So they're not quest line. It's actually interesting to see how many of the quest lines that got nerfed so far. So they're going to play the Neophyte, which sucks for them that we don't actually care about the increased cost this turn. We still get to kill their entire board with a touch and a null. And we draw into a Neithrion and play him instantly. So the Revolve Shaman, that's interesting. We're just going to continue hitting face. Because that can't backfire in any way, right? I'm not too worried about them turning their totem into a 3 cost, to be honest. So they have a Null of their own, which is fine. Kind of annoying, but still fine. Now Slogger, which actually is bad. And their Null turns into another Null. Why, why is that even possible? Why can you have a minion turn into itself whenever it evolves if it's a 10 cost or higher minion? It, it makes no sense. It's just a free heal at that point. You're going to get two pack meals. I honestly think pack meal is probably the most common neutral card in most decks. It's just such a good card for just including it in your deck. It doesn't require any synergies or nothing. It just exists. I ran into a uh, leatherworking kit hunter deck that uh, just centered around getting their pack meals as big as humanly possible. Drawing into the Dark Alley pack and milling it really, really sucks. Going to play the Poisonous minion. Going to heal a little bit. And then we can use Raise Dead, see what we get. We get two pack meals, which is literally the worst options that we could. Leaving up as many minions as we have could be bad for us, but oh well. They are only at 2 HP. More bones to gnaw. There's their second null. I'm assuming they probably have something like Revolve or something. So they're going to evolve the Null and something else. Interesting, but that doesn't really save them. I guess they could board clear here. Though we can board clear with a Hysteria. And then we can play our Dark Alley Pack. Dark Alley Pack is such a simple card, but it's so nice. The funny thing about it is you can actually duplicate it off of Tasman if you really need to. I 
think we just win unless they have some type of direct damage or a pack meal pack meal can help so we can drain soul one of the pack meals then use touch or i guess the hysteria and then just go face all right now that we're through the games let's discuss how well the deck did and why i built the deck the way i did Overall, I would say this deck was shockingly pleasant to play, and it actually had a pretty decent win rate. It's definitely a deck that most people aren't going to expect out of Warlock right now, as so many people are still focused on the quest line, even after all the nerfs. However, I hope this deck kind of gets out of the shadow of quest line, as I know Handlock is sometimes used with the quest line right now. There's no reason not to really, but... I prefer this strategy over just focusing on the quest line as it allows you to be A, a little bit more unique, and B, have a more control package in the deck. And that control package actually allows you to win out in a lot of games where quest line would not. Quest line mage was the only matchup that really didn't feel like there was a consistent way to win. However, if you could consistently get out big minions, they would have to burn all the resources in order to get rid of them which thus allowed you to be able to swarm their HP with maybe one or two pokes from a 9 attack minion, thus allowing you to win the game since they have no way to heal themselves up. This deck definitely runs some odd choices, such as Archwitch uh, Willow. This card got buffed up like last set or the set before it, I don't remember which. However, it hasn't really seen that much play, but Hand Warlock is the perfect fit for the card. We just need to see a little bit more support for the overarching archetype of the deck. And the deck definitely did get some good cards from the set, such as uh, Dark Alley Pack and Netheron and even Entitled Customer. I know I included the Enhanced Dreadlords over the Mogar uh, Forge Fiends. I did this because I liked having more board presence over having the armor from the Forge Fiends. This, however, can lead into some situations such as against... Uh, questline mage where you would rather have the armor but the life steal off of the secondary minion that spawns out of the dreadlords in my opinion was much better in the general stance besides that matchup the card that i was most close to actually cutting out of the deck was backfire mainly because most of the time you actually already have a field up hand and this card actually just stays dead in your hand for a few turns while you're trying to shove off a bunch of minions or a bunch of spells However, there are times where it'll turn back online some of the cards such as Null or the, your Dark Alley Packs in order to have a big uh, benefit from either of them, which is why I ended up keeping it in the deck as it allows you to have consistent draw power and because this is a more control heavy deck, you want to access some of your control cards more often. Even a card like Raise Dead was very useful in this deck as it allowed you to either copy your Anathreons or your Entitled Customers or even a Willow would be useful. The only card that you would not want to get off of your Race Dead is probably your Pack Mules as you lose the benefit of having an additional copy of it. However, it's still worth running the Pack Mules as it fills up your hand for both Dark Alley Pack and the Gnolls. Overall, if you're looking for some type of Warlock deck that is not Questline, and I know there's probably plenty of people looking for a deck like that. Handlock is a nice classic deck that actually performs relatively well in the current meta state of the game. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and a comment down below. And until next time, bye bye.